the important thing to understand is that there, there are variants of concerns because they're coming out much more strongly than the initial virus. We're all learning more about the different variants of COVID-19 as they continue to spread across Canada. Health Canada reporting nearly 11,000 cases of the B117 variant and nearly 500 cases of variant P1 first seen in Brazil. Virologists and epidemiologists say the current data suggests those variants could be more than twice as transmissible as the original virus. Some people are actually referring it to as 2.5 times more transmissible, although the value will, will probably lower. But nonetheless, that is sufficient for that variant, that virus to be much more transmittable and to create those types of exponential growth curve. It is far more contagious. The B117 variant, which is the most common, is definitely more contagious. We think the other ones are too. It's hard to measure, but that means less exposure time and it means lower viral dose are both ways that you can still get sick. So if you go to the grocery store or if there's a child attending school, they may be exposed to COVID and, and not just at enough dose to make them sick. So now the bar is lower. P1 is hitting Western Canada hard right now with BC reporting 379 P1 cases on Thursday. That's more than any other jurisdiction outside the country where it was first detected. Alberta has reported 600 variant cases, but didn't specify which strain. But over the weekend, Alberta health officials announced a significant P1 outbreak now under investigation. Virologist Benoit Barbeau says virus mutations occur all the time, but only the fittest mutations survive and spread to become new variants. Perhaps the best illustration of the danger of this fast-moving variant, the Vancouver Canucks now have 16 of their 22 players on the NHL's COVID protocol list, with a number of them reportedly showing variant symptoms. There's not only the players that are on the list, but there's also three members of the coaching staff who's been affected and a couple members of the taxi squad. And basically Basically, what the NHL decided to do as of the weekend was say, we're going to act as if everybody is going to be affected. It goes to show that existing levels of vigilance aren't enough. So clearly, somehow, there's a loophole there, and I think that if they work back and looked at it, it would be found uh, where there was some contact that shouldn't have happened. And again, with non-variant COVID, that may have gone nowhere or may have led to something so mild that it wouldn't even, even have been noticed. But the variants are far more likely to be transmitted and that's what that's what this I think is showing. The Canucks outbreak is unique happening inside a strict bubble that sees daily testing and chiefly among young physically fit men. Barbeau says this underlines the difficulty of managing risk of exposure. You know there's no zero risk. I mean you, you, even though if you're wearing masks you're very careful and uh, you know there's always possibility that you're are at, or you can be infected. So uh, remind yourself that if you do all those measures, at least you're reducing substantially the risk that you're getting infected. But the zero risk doesn't exist. While there may be no such thing as zero risk, the ways of lowering your own personal risk remain the same as ever. Wash your hands, mask up, and try to stay at least two meters away from people who aren't in your own personal bubble. In Ottawa, Shaoli Lee, City News.